qualitative research analysis. What is qualitative research analysis? It is the analysis of the language-based data you have collected, often through categorizing this data to identify meanings, patterns and trends. These meanings, patterns and trends can be further used to generate insights to address your research question. Types of qualitative research analysis. Number one is content analysis. It mainly focuses on the systematic classification of data using coding to identify the key categories issues within it. Coding is where you segment a given data set into chunks. Each chunk is then given a label or code to describe what it is about. You can use color coding or numbering to assign different chunks of data to the same code to enable you to group chunks of data together by their code at a later stage of analysis. Number two is thematic analysis. It mainly focuses on the search and generation of themes from the dataset. It is similar to content as it uses coding and also aims to reduce data down into a summary form, but it differs slightly through using coding to identify and apply themes to chunks of data. Themes are patterns found in the information that are important to describe and organize or interpret aspects of the topic within the data. Number three is grounded theory analysis. While this approach is similar to content analysis, as it also uses coding techniques, grounded theory does not start with predetermined or existing ideas, theories, or themes that you search for in the data. Instead, you follow an inductive process to examine the data to see what themes emerge organically from the data itself. A key part of grounded theory is the ongoing examination of data, rather than waiting until all of the data has been collected before you start to analyze it. You should start by reading through and reviewing the initial data collected to note any ideas, concepts or elements that are repeated or re-emerge throughout the data. These should be labeled with codes. As more data is collected, you should review it and label with existing codes or new codes as appropriate. As you code the data, it is important to analyze one sentence at a time rather than attempting to analyze large chunks of data or paragraphs altogether. You should also continually compare the codes you have generated against each other and against the data to ensure consistency. This will also help you to uncover any patterns from the codes and group related codes into concepts and categories. These categories can then be reviewed to form the basis of a new theory or understanding about the topic under examination. Number four is discourse analysis. It includes a range of techniques to analyze written, verbal or nonverbal communication data. For example, analysis of written sources such as emails or letters, verbal sources such as telephone interviews and non-verbal sources such as sign language and body language. Discourse analysis focuses on analyzing the language used while taking into account the social context in which the communication occurred to reveal the socio-psychological characteristics of the person or people involved. This may include any previous communication related to the data being analyzed, power link and understanding of identity. Elements of communication that may form a part of discourse analysis includes intonation and tone, gestures, syntax, turn-taking in conversation and patterns of speech. Number five is narrative analysis. It examines the ways in which stories and narratives are constructed and told within organizations, communities, social groups and by individuals to help understand how groups are constructed and organized and the ways in which people think. There are four main types of narrative. Number one is bureaucratic, where the narrative is highly structured and logical, and often focuses on imposing control. Number two is quest, 
where the narrative has a coherent and compelling story and aims to lead others to strive to succeed as part of the narrative structure. Number three is chaos, where the narrative is lived out, rather than told, and Number four is postmodern, where the narrative is lived out, but narrator is aware of the story and what they are trying to achieve with the narrative. Number six is conversation analysis. This approach analyzes verbal communication such as conversation and verbal interviews in detail as the interaction occurs in real time, that is, analyzing conversation from the perspective of the conversation taking place. It is guided by the principle that all conversations are governed by rules and patterns that remain the same in every conversation, and that what is said can only be understood by examining what was said before and after it. You should initially transcribe all of the data using established conversation analysis symbols to denote elements in speech and verbal interactions. You can then analyze these transcripts to examine what words are used, in what order, if there was any overlap between speakers and where they place emphasis in what they say. Through revealing the underlying structures in conversations in this way, you can analyze the data in relation to anticipated adherence to the rules that govern conversation and any violations and exceptions that may reveal interesting meanings and patterns. Conversation analysis is most appropriate for any verbal communication and interactions, and can be applied to interview recordings, focus group recordings, and data from participant observation or ethnography. It can be especially useful for analyzing social interactions that take place in organizational settings including doctor's offices, helplines and educational settings such as a recording of a lesson. Kindly subscribe my YouTube channel Thesis Helper. Thanks for watching.